So the heading is calculus with other bases. John, I'm speaking. You should be listening. Thank you. So let's make a start. Going to jump right in. When you hear the phrase other bases, what you should be thinking is, well, when is in calculus, when is it important to have a specific base? And then there are like the other bases. Have a think. Bases, what does that indicate to you? What, what words come to your mind when you hear that? Yeah, logarithms, what else? Exponentials. Exponentials, very good. So in both exponentials and logarithms, there's one particular base that is the most important to us. We call it the natural base. It is E, 2.718, etc. right? This base E that we know is about 2.7 is super important. It makes all of the calculus go super nice, right? But of course, we don't always have that base. We sometimes have 2 or 10 or whatever number you like, right? So how do we do with the calculus with this? Let me remind you of how we differentiate when we differentiate something like, say, 2 to the power of x. Now, if you think back to when we did this the first time, the exponential curve, it does look like this, right? Every exponential curve looks something like that. So the derivatives of these exponential curves are also exponential curves. Do you remember that, right? So of course, the classic example is e to the x. The derivative of e to the x is, of course, just e to the x, right? But when we get to get these guys, there's a slight adjustment we have to make. You do get 2 to the x, like that same exponential with this base that you started with. But then we have to adjust it, because only e to the x, that's the only one that lands back exactly on itself. Does anyone remember what the adjustment is? We have to multiply by something. Any takers? I'll give you a clue. It starts with an L. <laughs> it's going to be a log. What kind of log? Ln. Ln. It'll be the natural log, and then the natural log of whatever base you got given. So if we'd started with 5 to the x, it would have been log 5. I've got a 2 there, so it's going to be log 2. Okay, that's the derivative. Full stop, that's it. Okay. We can, of course, generalize this. It's not just true for 2. It's true for any number or constant, I should say, a. So if a was a million or negative 3, whatever you like, right? Negative 3 is actually not a good example for other reasons. Um, when you put this in, you're going to get the original exponential and then finish, finish it off. What are you going to do? Log of a. a, thank you, which was um, 2 in our first instance there. Okay. Now, this was in differential calculus land. We're in integral calculus land now, right? So I'm interested in what happens when we integrate such results. Now, thankfully, this result here uh, paves the way for us because we know integration is the opposite of differentiation. So if I integrate this guy instead of differentiating, uh, a to the x dx, just like differentiating an exponential gives you a different exponential, well, integrating an exponential will give you a different exponential. It's going to look or start off looking much the same. When we differentiated, we, we, when we differentiated, we multiplied by log a. So this time, we're going to divide by log a. That'll undo the differentiation you saw before. Not to forget, this is, of course, an integral. So the last thing we need is our constant of integration plus c, and we're done. Okay.